high inflation is eating away at your savings and prosperity of your family. It is a tax on savings and a major problem for most people in 2022. It should be the issue you focus most on this year. And in my opinion, it will only get worse. It will decrease your purchasing power and make you work for nothing. Inflation sucks because it overwhelmingly impacts the poor and those on fixed incomes with no capacity to suddenly pay an extra 50% for the weekly grocery bill. When I was a kid, inflation was high. We were living through the oil crisis in the 1970s. The oil-producing countries held back supply to squeeze international prices. They were angry about U.S. foreign policy and wanted to make a point. Believe me when I say that things were bad in the 1970s. Gasoline prices rose from 36 cents a gallon in 1970 to $1.19 a gallon in 1980. That is equivalent to an oil price of $4.25 today. And that is actually quite close to today's current price thanks to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and another price squeeze by producers. But that is a story for another day. Between 1973 and 1979, oil prices went from $10 a barrel to over $35. That is the same as an oil price today of $115 per barrel. The markets took a huge dive. Central banks loaned money freely and interest rates rose to impossible levels. Many people found themselves over a barrel and suffered immensely. The Dow Jones Index started the 1970s at just over 800 points and ended the decade at the same level, having been all over the place. Interest rates spiked. The risk-free 10-year Treasury rate was 15.82% in 1981. That caused rates for other borrowers to hover around 20% or more. The result was a total catastrophe. A lost decade. A major missed opportunity for global growth. They were real tough times for people on fixed incomes with no money in the bank. Then central bankers set themselves the goal of keeping inflation at between 2 and 3 percent. By and large, they managed currencies, interest rates and credit in order to keep inflation steady. Lately they have totally screwed the pooch on inflation, and it was all preventable. If only we weren't guided by idiots and economic incompetence. Why is high inflation bad? An underlying rate of 2% inflation won't hurt the poor or those on fixed incomes, provided retirees are getting a reasonable return for their savings. A slightly positive inflation rate greases the wheels of commerce, provides a margin of error in the event inflation is overestimated, and deters deflation, the overall decline in prices that can be much more destabilizing than comparable inflation. A little inflation can be a sign of a healthy economy and not something that's likely to cause inflation expectations to rise. If inflation was 2% last year and is 2% this year, it's mostly background noise. Businesses, workers, and consumers would likely expect inflation to remain at 2% next year in that scenario. But now we are facing a situation where workers must ask for a major raise just to keep pace with inflation. And that puts pressure on business to raise prices, further fueling the inflationary cycle. In the worst case scenario, high inflation fuels hyperinflation. This occurs with very high and typically accelerating inflation. It quickly erodes the real value of the local currency as prices of all goods increase. I'm not saying hyperinflation is ahead of us, but it is worth remembering the economic foolishness that might lead a country into this kind of situation. I'm thinking about economic powerhouses like Venezuela, Zimbabwe, and maybe even Turkey. All of these places have experienced out-of-control inflation caused by crazy government spending and insane economic policies. Who could forget the scenes of chaos in Zimbabwe when citizens would have to go shopping with a wheelbarrow full of cash only to realize that when they got to the front of the queue, prices had gone up again. There is no escape from that kind of spiral.
but unreasonably high inflation is not some theoretical problem afflicting socialist hellholes. It is happening to the United States right now. Some of the largest price hikes this year occurred in gasoline, shelter, and food. The year-over-year -year increase in food prices was 10.4%, while for shelter it was 5.6% and for energy prices, 41.6%. And price rises show no sign of abating. Is a recession around the corner? Some say a recession is already here in the United States. We have no desire to be banned from this platform in our very first video, but all the signs are out there. Even if some people don't want to wake up and smell the damn coffee. Morgan Stanley Wealth Management's Lisa Shallot warns earnings optimists are sleepwalking off a cliff. She says the Fed is signaling an unequivocal seriousness that they're willing to risk a recession to get the job done. A global recession probability model by Ned Davis Research recently rose above 98%, triggering a severe recession signal. The only other times the model's been that high was during previous acute downturns, such as in 2020 and 2008 to 2009, according to the firm's Patrick Ayers. Worries over economic growth have percolated for months, but incipient weakness in the industrial cycle and in U.S. housing has investors worried that things are deteriorating quickly. The likelihood of trouble in Europe over the summer only makes the outlook more bleak. Investors piled into short-selling contracts at a record pace on Friday, an event that has preceded previous market bottoms, while a slew of stocks are still trailing their short-term average prices. We think that going short in record numbers is a sure sign of trouble ahead. Take a gander at the last few days on global markets. The Standard & Poor's 500 index sank to the lowest level since December 2020, bringing losses for September 2022 to nearly 8% as the British pound weakened to its lowest level while commodities buckled under the weight of a hulked-up U.S. dollar. U.S. Treasury yields continued to rise, with the 10-year rate climbing as much as 21 basis points to 3.898%, its highest level since April 2010. How do you protect yourself in a high inflationary period? Most people can't do anything about inflation. Most of us have been tapped out by the rolling crises of the past three years. You can pile any spare cash you might have into property if you like, but who knows what will happen there. These housing prices can't stay where they are without seriously hurting our kids. If you live outside the U.S., housing prices will likely continue to rise. This is particularly the case in countries like the U.K. and Australia where interest rates are comparatively low and demand is fueled by migration. The current high inflation rate can be attributed to many different factors, most of which are a result of the pandemic. Ultimately, rising prices in can be attributed to three general causes, increases in household demand caused by pandemic stimulus checks, supply chain shortages due to the pandemic, the war in Ukraine and the presence of a strong labor market. Most of this should have been anticipated by central bankers. The pandemic is nothing new, but incentivizing people to withdraw from the labor market is totally new. Unemployment is low after surging to 15% during the pandemic, but a lot of highly qualified people now find themselves unable to get anything other than a minimum wage job. Companies say they can't find workers with the right skills to come aboard. It seems that the education system isn't producing graduates with the right skills. Politicians claim that the economic pain is all about the unreasonableness of Vladimir Putin. Perhaps some of it is down to the war in Ukraine, but Putin has been unreasonable for a long time and it should have been perfectly obvious to anyone with half a brain that Putin would consolidate his gains in Crimea and build a land bridge to Russia through southern Ukraine. Putin and his cronies has been saying this for years. So when he goes out and does it, how can the political class claim they had no idea that such severe pain could occur? You've probably guessed by now that I think most economists are assholes. I certainly think that about the central bankers, so-called financial experts and out politicians who have led us to this point. These jackasses think they are legends for managing the economy in the good times. They want you to sit back and shower them with accolades for doing the exact same job that a semi-conscious monkey could do. To be honest, any idiot can manage an economy or a company in the good times. It takes some real skill to manage things smoothly in times like this. 
We are on the verge of a significant catastrophe and they are all sitting on their fat asses telling each other how good they are. So we think you better prepare for the coming storm because these creeps aren't going to help you or your family. Okay viewers, here is a question for you. If the labor market is so strong, why can't you get a raise from your boss? Has anyone asked their boss for a raise recently? We dare you to try it in this environment. You may just find yourself on the street or back at your mother's house, or eating garbage, or relying on your local soup kitchen, or having to fight crackheads for cigarette butts and dodging monkeypox in the process. So if you want to buy your kid the G.I. Joe doll with the genuine Kung Fu grip this Christmas, then keep your mouth shut. Just be happy that you have a job at all, because next year things will get worse. How can things possibly be any worse than the past three years? That is because our political masters have no idea what they are doing. They are either incompetent or stupid, or both. They are genuine assholes who don't care about anyone but themselves. And unfortunately, you have no choice but to comply. So don't say you weren't warned.